Um, so look, good afternoon everyone. If you're just joining us, thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, look, we'll wait a couple of minutes um, to give everyone uh, the opportunity to join. Um, I think we're expecting upwards of 150 people um, to join the webinar today. So um, yeah, just uh, be patient and, and hang on a couple of minutes and, and then we'll get started. Okay, look, it's two minutes past 12 where I am. Um, so I think we're gonna get started. Um, good afternoon, um, thank you for joining. Um, and welcome to the Aspire uh, GBS Talks event, Process Mining, uh, what is it? How can it help me? And, uh, and, and where to start? Um, brought to you in cooperation with um, uh, Philip Morris International, um, Shared Service Centre Europe, um, Abbey, and uh, Auto uh, ID. And for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Andrew Hallam, and I have the privilege of running Aspire. Um, for those of you who don't know Aspire, um, so Aspire is the network of companies um, delivering global um, business and technology services uh, from Krakow, which of course is the Europe's business services um, hub. Um, so um, our aim with this webinar is to, uh, in fact, with all of our webinars, is to draw on the expertise and the experience of our, our member companies um, for the benefit of all of our members. Um, and today, um, for a wider audience, I can see we're up to 57 now, um, on the basis that a riding tide lifts all boats. Um, so I say we're a network of Krakow based companies, um, but you are welcome to join us wherever you are located, um, especially in these times of uh, virtual um, communication. Anyway, um, so if we could go to the agenda slide. Thank you. All right, okay, so this is our agenda. It's a pretty packed agenda. Um, so welcome to the SSC world. That was me, I've done that, all right? So um, first of all, we're gonna have a short introduction to process mining technology from Michal, um, from AutoID, who's Abby's country partner in Poland. Um, then how to achieve and continually maintain process excellence in shared services by using process mining. Um, from Suzanne Richter Wills um, from Abbey. And then practical cases on how the implementation of process mining technology um, enhances the business operation from Yarek and Krzysztof um, from PMI. And then finally, last but not least, um, live demo um, from Edwards um, of um, uh, Timeline, um, which is Abbey's process mining um, tool. That we have to pack into 75 minutes plus questions. Um, so as I say, it's quite challenging. Um, I'm gonna challenge our presenters to, um, to keep to time. Roughly speaking, people have 20 minutes, um, including questions. Um, Michal, on the other hand, has five minutes, though he informed me last night he needs seven. So Michal, yes. you have seven minutes counting now. <laughs> Over to you. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Just before I start, um, please confirm uh, that you can see my um, presentation and you can see my slide. Uh, we can, yep, and it's in presentation mode. Okay, just hold on for a second. Okay, so um, my name is Michael Pillow. I'm representing AutoID, which is a country partner of Abbey in Poland. Uh, when it comes to the title of my presentation and agenda, you can see on the slide. So this introduction to process mining technology, I emphasize the word introduction because it's going to be only a general information without details, but still some information about this technology. Uh, when it comes to our ID, we are a company from Poland located in Krakow. We are, a step, we are having status of country partner with Abbey in Poland, so that things, means we are promoting, supporting Abbey in Poland. And we are running a partner program in Poland for the companies who would like to sell this technology to their clients and implement it. When it comes to the definition of process mining uh, on itself, we can find it in the document Process Mining Manifesto, published by Task Force of Process Mining. 
And you can see this definition on the, on the slide. I mark on the red the key words from this definition. So it is about discovering, monitoring, improving real process, not a SIM one, by the event logs which we can extract from the information systems. Apart from this definition, I also put some terms, words, expression, which you will, you will come across sooner or later if you will go deeper in this technology. So you will speak or listen such things as task mining, case ID, drill down, bottleneck, data driven decision, best practice, or even such a, at first glance strange expression as Godfather, uh, maybe why process mining first, not RPA, and such things as what should we automate. That's about the definition and user's term in this technology. But how it works in reality, in practice? So the starting point is to get the event logs from the IT systems in which our process is performed. So for example, our order to cache process, uh, we have the situation that uh, our employees are performing this process. So we can get these event logs from the database, uh, from the file uh, logs. And to show you what is event logs on itself, you can see this on the orange uh, color. So to have one event log, so one step in the process, we need to have at least three things. First is the event name, so it could be order received, stock checked, or the whole. The second thing is that it's a time step, so this event name happened on the specific day, hour, or even second of the time. And the last thing is case ID, that it refers to something, for example, the inverse number, the application number. All of this, what you can see on the right side, the orange is not necessary, but if we have it, it will give us more ability to go deeper in analyzing our process. So once we have this events log, we can upload it to our technology of process minding and automatically we will reconstruct the process exactly as it was performed. So thanks that we can have reflection of our real process in a digital form. Uh, very often it is called creating a process digital tweet. Another aspect of this is that once we upload this uh, data to our process mining technology, we'll have probably a lot of analytics tools, filters to look at this process from different perspectives, uh, from this different angle, for example, from the time uh, perspective, and to analyze this, what is happening on this process. Another thing uh, which is also very important in this technology is aspect of monitoring, sometimes even real-time monitoring of our uh, process, alerting if something is happening wrong, we can act and do something, and even some kind of predictive uh, tools. It is all referred to the new techniques of machine learning, AI, and definitely the whole industry is going to develop in the future in this direction. When it comes to the representative vendors of the process mining technology, you can see this on the slide. I take this list from the Gardner report from 2020, Market uh, Guide for Process Mining. And what is also interesting that in the recent day, uh, years, there were quite important big acquisitions of the company. And for example, in 2019, Abby bought Timeline PI, a company from the United States. UI bought by uh, process Gold Company last year, uh, SAP acquired Signavio, and in this year, even IBM bought Mining Air. Actually, that showed the maturity of this technology. That also showed that this technology is ready to use for the customers because it can provide some really big value for them. The last slide it's some information about the resource inserters, about this process mining. Uh, for example, if someone of you would like to have some practical knowledge about this, pro this technology, I encourage to have a free of charge online course, Process Mining Data Science in Action, organized by the Professor Will van der Haas, who is also an author of the book Process Mining Data Science in Action, which is very often described as a Bible for this technology. Professor Will van der Aas on itself is also described by the community of process mining as well as the founders as a godfather of this technology that was referring to my first slide when you will sooner or later come across 
the information about someone who is described as a godfather. Another thing which you can find is also the website from the major technology, some reports from the research and advisory company. And one thing, um, the main takeaways for me during my presentation is start to think seriously about this te technology because in the opinion of many experts, it could be, I'm not sure whether it will be, but it could be the next RPA tool. And I think that the best way to get more knowledge about this uh, technology, a part of of course, participating in our webinar is simply start to doing it. So learning by doing, consider, really consider proof of value, proof of concept on one of your process. And that's all from my side. Thank you, Andrew. Please carry on. Thanks, Michal. Seven minutes. We're, you're a pro. You're a pro. Well yeah. done. Um, I was a bit worried there. You did say the best way to learn about this is, is this webinar, because I thought you were about to send us off to the various materials in other places um, but anyway the best the best place to learn is in fact um, if, if you're on this webinar you're in the right place okay um, so okay. there is just one, one question which is is the webinar being recorded and yes it is um, where will it be shown I know for, for a fact it will be shown on the Aspire um, on the Aspire YouTube channel um, but I imagine it'll also be shown on um, Abby will also have uh, distribution um, of, of the recording. Okay, um, look, um, so we get to know our speakers a little bit more before we move to the next presentation. I've actually got a question for all of our speakers. All right, so I think we heard from, from Michal there that um, uh, process mining could be, um, I think you said it could be the next important thing in RPA, but my question is, is, is it a game changer? Is it a game changer? Um, and is it more important than RPA? Okay. I'm going to go to um, Yarek. Why don't you take that? Um, and I would be very, uh, if it is a game changer, I would be um, uh, very cautious with this statement. Um, and today in, in our discussion, uh, in our presentation, actually, I, I want to demystify uh, certain things uh, around process mining. I, I hope I, I will uh, destroy some of the assumptions that you might have uh, around it. Um, but but in all in all in all fairness, um, you know once you've dealt with the infrastructure and you approach it properly for process excellence, um, believe me, you don't want to go back to the old ways. Therefore, it is changing the the playing field, uh, but it is a long way to go. And I have my battle scars, which I will share a bit later in my presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Suzanne. Would you like to kind of add anything there? Yeah, I think for me, it's it's a very important tool for the future. But I, I'm always one that's cautious because when we when we all first heard about RPA, um, I think um, there was a bit of a hype about it and the expectations were too too high set. And I think there's not one tool that can, can change the world and can change everything, but it's a very important tool. And I think there's some um, underestimated use cases which it can be applied to. I think there's probably a misconception in the market of what these tools can do, and hopefully we help to clarify some of that today. Okay. Uh, anybody, anybody else like to make a, a comment before we move on? Okay. All right. In that case, Suzanne, I'm going to give the floor uh, to you. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? The obvious question. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Yes, so thank you very much for giving me a chance to um, present today. So I'm, as already was said, I'm working for Abby, and there I'm responsible for the sales in Dachen in France. Abby is a provider of technology in the area of digital intelligence. So that's on the one hand side. It's called Capture, the wider area of, of um, AI supported capture and what we call process intelligence. But that's not why I'm here today. My first 20 years of my um, professional life, I spent working in and managing shared service centers and BP operations in Europe and worldwide. And for me, it was always important to look at what tools are available to help me to make my operations efficient. So what's really helping me out there, what's supporting me. And um, around seven years ago, I therefore changed to the software industry to actually help making these tools more user friendly, more fit for purpose. And I've been watching the area of process mining 
and the previous ways towards what process mining can deliver now very closely and would like to share today some of my um, insights into what this technology really can do and how it can be applied. So really there's three areas I would like to cover. So the one is what, how can I benefit? What does it really bring me? It's the one part. Then what are the different roles? So how do I really reply this technology and where is the future? So where is it going? So what, what can I expect if I invest, if I, my time and my resources into using this technology, where is, where is the story actually going for me? And we're starting off with really where, where are we coming from? So when you look at processes, then um, to control them means to know them. So you actually, if you want to improve, if you want to control a process, you first of all have to be able to measure it. You have to be able to see end to end how it is working. And there the challenges start already. We may talk about processes running over different systems, maybe running different locations, and there could be variations that are unknown to us in the process because of the, the daily life that actually comes into it. And we may have fantastic rules, we may have standardization programs, but at the end of the day, like the iceberg shows, do we really know everything that's going on below the surface? Now, we did a study last year with a, an institute to uh, ask different organizations, different verticals to say, when you have process rules and you have standardized processes, how well are your staff adhering to them? And you can see here the different answers we have been given. And if you look at the bottom, you see the global average. So the global average showing us that yeah, there could be a bit more than um, just one way of a process running and that could have positive or negative impacts on the way we do business. So for me, it's always important when, when you look at an efficiency improvement or a, a control, a compliance check, an audit, uh, a review of a process, that these questions here that I show and, and many more can be answered. And the question is, um, if you look at you in the audience today, are you able to answer these questions today? So for example, when you look at a process that you may or may not have standardized already, can you know if there is still variations out there? Do people in many, maybe in another location of your shared services um, do it differently than another location? And if they do it differently and they are varying, um, is this a good or a bad thing? Does it actually impact time? Does it impact cost in a positive way? Is it maybe a, a potential for um, automating? Do you know that today? I would expect that the answer for most of you would say yes, with a big but. And the buts would be, you know, the way, how do you get to this data? So to, today, the most common way of still to actually gather information about processes end to end, especially if they are complex and they are uh, run, as I said, different systems or different um, locations is manual analysis. So it's really people tracking data, tracking processes, gathering it. Excel is very much a lot of tools still to analyze that. Then, of course, there are many other tools. We've got reporting tools, BI tools, different uh, cubes that we can pull data from, from different systems to maybe gather some different viewpoints of our process. Um, very often, though, it may only be a snapshot in time. So then again, next quarter, next month, the same exercise starts again. and everything that happened in between, we may not know. So the challenges are, as before, we, we have different systems, we have different um, systems in which, from which the data also comes and which we have to view the data in. And the question is, is there not maybe nowadays a better way or something that process mining can help us with to actually approach some of these challenges? And there it is. So it is the evolution path. So if you look at coming from manual analysis, maybe being currently in an area where you have different tools for BI for reporting, well loved Excel spreadsheets where you may tick boxes and so on, then process mining is really providing the possibility to have a process end-to-end -end view in one tool where you can actually analyze, you can monitor, you can do many other things when we look at in a minute that you can actually have one tool, very easy, intuitively usable, which you will see later on in a live demo, that provides us with the ability to really understand and control our process. 
Now you may or may not hear or heard about task mining being mentioned in combination with process mining. Task mining is really an, another evolutionary piece that actually allows you to drill down from the process to the task and the best practice of an individual. So it's something else that is in an emerging mode for many tools, but something that's certainly also providing even more value and we may hear something about the practical usage um, later on in the other presentations. But I would like to start with the roles of um, RPA. So uh, Mikhail already said there's different roles that RPA can play and as you can see here I've got four roles I would like to dive into with you today and look at how can a shared service center, a BPO, any other operation benefit from that and really utilize it. The one that most people may think about uh, as a role and a use case when, when they talk about process mining is analysis and that's certainly the starting point. So when you have process, process mining tool you are able to analyze across systems, across locations, your process end to end and then really do magic things really let's pull it that way. For me that's really, it's not magic but it's some very practical use cases. The first one is starts at the beginning. So if you've considering taking a process over maybe as a shared service center, so you're talking to your internal or your external customers, then many discussions are being held and you're looking at how is the process currently being um, actioned, what variations may exist and this is one of the first starting points. So you can use this tool to actually do this analysis of a process you want to take over, on board or maybe change in future and it provides you really with a um, a realistic objective view of what is happening and it provides a higher efficiency and it reduces the risk of course as well when you make changes or take things over or do them differently in that process. So this, this view then provides you with the ability to actually look at and planning automation for example. We talked about RPA a little bit earlier. So many RPA use cases failed because the um, organizations that were applying RPA didn't have the right use cases or not enough use cases to make the ROI the ones that they wanted and the business case to fly. So again with the current state-of-the-art process mining tools you are able to identify automation candidates and you can to some extent or another predict outcomes of what you will do when you actually automate in future. So you can actually make a kind of prediction, I wouldn't call it simulation, but a prediction of the outcome that you can then thereafter measure to ensure that your business case is actually will come to a successful end. This also then of course supports the air, whole area of standardization, of sharing best practice because that is the same effect you will have from an analysis and by analyzing um, processes with these process mining tools you also support any review that you may have from of your business. You may review with your internal external customers, you have an audit, a compliance review and the same data is also with a different view and a slant that you can put on it can actually serve these different processes in the analysis mode. Analysis is not everything though because if you only do analysis then you, you, you're missing the point and your ROI may be good but it could be much much better because the whole area of what I would call the digital twin, so a digital representation of your process where you go into a real or near real time monitoring of your process is really providing many more opportunities. On the one hand side you can measure the impact of the changes you may have made. We talked about you can analyze and identify automation. Now you can immediately measure what the impact is and you can adjust very quickly and to ensure that really what you're doing is, is having the impact you want to have and doesn't create any issues further on down the line. The other one uh, monitoring part is also the whole area of compliance. So you can ensure that there's no violations of any compliant um, worthy aspects happening or about to happen because this, this monitoring goes a bit further that you actually cannot only see what has happened and react on it but you can also and we come to that in a, in a second go a little bit more in the future and that's also where the real beauty comes into it. But say you identified something is going wrong so with the monitoring you can also then action it so you can alert. So rule-based alerting can be you can inform maybe a supervisor of something happening, you can maybe trigger for example an RPA bot, you can start a service. So there are many actions that you can actually with process mining tool help start to prevent and to stop 
things happening in your organizations that which are against the SLAs or the compliance pieces that you want to cover. When it comes into alerting, you're really already into the area which where the most of the R&D vendors, including Abby with our tools, are putting um, uh, a lot of our efforts. And that is to have AI help, machine learning help, other, other AI technique help to ensure that we can, with these tools, predict and prescribe what is going to happen. So predict means avoiding any violations of compliance or, for example, an SLA not being met. So this is a more machine learning aspect. So what has happened in the past and what is likely to happen again. And again, you can alert somebody and ensure you can take immediate remedial actions. The next step from that, and this is something that is emerging, is prescription. So this is not only alerting somebody to say, oh, something has happened here, take a look, maybe you should do that, but prescribe it. So you can actually automate really the next step and say, for example, now a bot has to come in, now a human has to come in, now this and that has to happen and really communicate, let system communicate with each other and go to what I see the real future benefit and the real um, full use of the, the tool is to go to a, like a self-healing mechanism. So where you really have a continuous improvement that is being triggered by the many systems working together, process mining, having this overall monitoring view and then pres prescribe, predict different areas and you have a continuous way of getting better and going towards the, the dream of the closed loop automation. I call it a dream because again, I don't want to hype it. So this is the path towards it. And the different tools in the market have different ways of um, supporting that, but certainly nobody is there yet. So that is not something you should expect out of the box and immediately for everything, but it's certainly a tool and tools that can help you to really um, improve the efficiency in your organization. And when you think about, okay, that's all very well, but what kind of systems do I need to have? What kind of um, process do I need to have? Because I heard maybe that certain tools are only usable for with certain technologies, other process mining tools may only be usable for certain use cases. Well, today's state-of-the-art tools should support you with many and any process across any kind of system. So there, as you can imagine, the tools vary. So there will always be benefits and advantages of one tool versus another. But in general, as you can see here, there's many different processes I mentioned that you should be able to control, to measure, and to analyze, to monitor, and to uh, work with, with tools such as process mining. Now, another thing that I would like to point out, because um, that's certainly a fear that I always had is, well, if I have certain processes, I may have manual tasks. I may have also parts of my process in the middle where I, I, still, I can't get to that data that Mikhail already touched upon. So what, what happens if I have a gap? You know, there's no point doing it, isn't it? No, there still is a point. So don't worry if the data is not complete. Don't worry if you have gaps within the visibility. The, the, the least you can expect then from the tool is to actually give you in the overall aspect of seeing a process, the visibility, if that part that today you cannot see is really important in the whole world aspect. Is the time you're spending, the resource you're spending so important that you have to make it visible, that you have to improve it? Or is it such something that in the overall aspect of the sphere of your process doesn't make such a big difference so that you can relax, not worry about that gap, your gap, but really concentrate on the other areas. So hopefully be, please be assured that even with data gaps in your process, you still can get value out of using these tools. So I would like to finalize and close and wrap up with um, the takeaways. So when you look at benefits, you, you have can expect many benefits from these tools. The first one is really to have a real end-to-end -end transparency of your process of in all its glory, with all its variations, so you can see really what is going on. And uh, that's one of the benefits that hopefully um, could bring you many others, such as you can therefore then start your excellence programs and increase all the areas that you want need to in, in, um, influence with your programs, including, of course, ensuring that with the monitoring, you can have a compliance, security, and de-risk your so compliance parts. And so as the roles are concerned, the takeaway for you is it's much more than just analyzing a process. It's 
much, much more really utilizing it in a day-to-day -day business, going towards the monitoring and really having the whole area of alerting prediction and prescription in mind for the future. And that's where the future is taking us. It's really on the one hand side to have the ability to get more and more into a continuous automatic improvement of a process, a closed loop automation and ability to, with the tools and development of the R&D of these tools, to drill down more and more in the task, into the processes to get more value um, as you work with these tools and as your tool vendor is developing it in the future. Thank you very much. So thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Now, I have to say, when you talked about um, self-healing machines, it, it made me think of um, HAL in 2001 Space Odyssey, um, <laughs> having a breakdown. So, um, so I suppose, yeah, um, self-medicating self machines. Um, does anybody have a question for, from our other kind of panelists here um, for, for Suzanne? Okay, if not, so there is a question um, uh, from from uh, from the people that are listening in. So this is from Bruno, and he says, "How would you distinguish process mining from process intelligence? Um, do they depend on each other, um, or are their solutions independent?" Um, I would, for me, process intelligence is the overall. Um, aspect of having a combination of different disciplines to put, put together and in, in that process mining, task mining are tools that help towards it. And I think that the new generation of the uh, uh, process mining tools are, can rightly be called intelligence tools because they provide many more aspects of purely where the original part was, which is your your view of a process and your analysis. So it, it provides you more intelligence and it, you have different ways of really intelligently interact with the data and the process um, information that really then helps you, as I said, on that way to self-healing or whatever you'd call it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Look, we'll move on because, as I say, we're on a, we're on, um, a tight schedule here. Um, so we're going to go to, to Jarek and Christoph now from, um, from Philip Morris. Over to you guys. Thanks, Susan. Okay, uh, so welcome to, to our part. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, to Andrew and Aspire for, for having us uh, here. And uh, my name is Jarek, uh, Jarek Kulik. I'm here with my colleague, uh, Krzysiek. And uh, I've been with the company over 12 years. I had a chance to work in, uh, in various uh, functions and also had a, a pleasure to live in a couple of uh, PMI uh, locations. And since 2019, I'm looking after uh, data analytics topics and one of the streams uh, that is in my scope is uh, process mining. And um, today, as, as mentioned, I, I want to address uh, some of the myths around uh, process mining. And uh, I'll be very honest with you, I don't want to paint an ideal picture. Um, you know, we um, actually, we made a lot of mistakes in our journey and uh, we, we learned our lessons and um, so the, the, the take is not going to be ideal, but, uh, but rather a realistic uh, picture. But what we also know that, and after all this time, uh, actually I believe even more in, in process mining and the whole discipline. So, so this is what I'm, what I'm going to, to share with you to, today. And um, also uh, as a full disclosure, we are working with different, uh, different partners, uh, but our presentation here is not about technology, but rather uh, about the approach. So it's it's a tool agnostic uh, discussion. Okay. Now, um, why wh wh why it matters, right? We we all know the the, the traditional approach to to process excellence, right? We know uh, we know workshops, uh, all the uh, lean six sigma methods, and all the methodical approach to to workshops. Very very traditional, very very useful, still very impactful. And for those who are new to process mining, uh, it's uh, it's actually, it takes data from logs, from system logs, and it, it translates it into, into, into a process so that we can um, look objectively at the process. And we can simply uh, analyzing the trace that users and the process lives in the, in the system or in various, in various systems. Now, uh, the first myth that I want to address is that um, uh, process mining, uh, this is not a software. This is a, a discipline. 
and it has to be approached uh, from, from that perspective and that work only once we approach it this way it worked for uh, for us there is also uh, a task mining uh, which was a touch uh, you know also in, in my in my uh, in previous uh, previous discussion and uh, task mining I will I will also tell you that we are experimenting with with these uh, task mining gives something that I call a, a holy grail in a, in a process excellence because to be able to see what is happening on the screen of an analyst who is solving a problem, who is, I don't know, explaining the variance or explaining the deviation over and over in a, in a, in a monthly or weekly, weekly manner, uh, currently we are not able to capture that. Task mining gives us that promise. Therefore, I believe this, this can be a holy grail of modern uh, process, process excellence. Now, to tell you a little bit about our story, so uh, in Philip Morris, we have presence in, in all regions and over 150 markets. And um, over time, and we started uh, centralizing uh, business services uh, in 2005, and over time, more and more services uh, were centralized in our, in our GBS, uh, I, we call it IBS hubs. And um, at, at the same time, uh, we, 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 you know, we, we were uh, adding other hubs and we, we let's say we, we added more, more processes. At the same time, we realized that um, we actually have so much process data. We literally, we are sitting on mountains of, of process data. And the, and, and the more of processes that we added and the more uh, of, of markets that, that, that we connected to, to GBSs, the, the, the mountains even uh, grew larger. Um, and we have a, a typical approach to, you know, to look at this data. So we use it for KPIs. We, you know, we, we, there is a structured approach. But we also realized that uh, by applying uh, process mining methods, we can look at, at behaviors. We can look at behaviors of, of users in the process. In our case, when we look at the end-to-end -end process across the global or across the region, that means sometimes that we are talking about hundreds or thousands of users. So uh, why are they behaving in a certain way? What is driving their behavior? Or uh, uh, how, how can we explain it? Is there any pattern? So that was the, these were the, the, the fascinating questions that, uh, you know, that we wanted to, to find answer to. And, um, and let, me, let me tell you a little bit about the evolution of, uh, of process mining in, in, in PMI. So it's, we, we started uh, in end of uh, two, uh, 2018, uh, it started in corporate audit. And we're basically uh, you know, looking at uh, early, early process discoveries, looking at our restrictions and, and deviations. Um, then we wanted to extend to, to, to some of the GBS supported processes uh, to have a better overview, which were larger. We were also able to integrate the daily data. And this is another myth that I want to address. It takes time. It took time in our case to build a proper data model. It wasn't right away. It, it took time. So if you are on this journey, you might, you might invest some time and want to take this into consideration. Um, we also, uh, uh, early on in our journey, we realized that with our small uh, COE, we are simply too small to handle large scale projects. So we, so we, we actually pivoted a little bit uh, and we changed, we adapted our strategy. We wanted to focus on users and user adoptions. Uh, therefore, we, we crafted uh, you know, uh, a, a strong training program that uh, Krzysztof was delivering in, in various locations. Um, because our focus was on the users, we were also under pressure, uh, like all of us, to, um, to explain the business case, right? To prove the business case, and the way to look at it from the users and from uh, monthly uh, average user or daily average users was really helpful to us. And in the graph uh, uh, above, you see uh, monthly average users. Uh, we end we ended the year with over 120 uh, last uh, last last year. Um, uh, in last year, we, we wanted to expand a little bit to other processes, uh, and as well, we uh, you know we, we played with uh, uh, with, uh, with 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 expansions of the platform. So we played with, um, with, with with task mining, and we were also able now with our, with our community knowledge and, uh, and and know how we're able to drive and to deliver more larger scale and strategic use cases, which which helped. And another myth <laughs> is that. Uh, that I want to, or uh, uh, that I want to address is that you cannot do it with without proper top-down support and without 
proper change management. It's, it is it is simply critical to drive such a large uh, large scale initiative. Um, and uh, we, we also have very ambitious plans for, uh, for 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 this year and for for next years. Um, we want to play further with with uh, task mining. Uh, again, uh, expand to other processes, so cover other processes with process mining. And now we are realizing that, uh, you know, once we, in our case, that's a two years uh, history of, of process data for certain processes. When we, when you have a uh, uh, two years history of data and um, you, you know the behaviors, you know what is predictable, what is not predictable, you can interpret that. It actually creates a very powerful brain. And uh, the, uh, the platform that we are using also offers the execution of processes. So now we are, uh, you know, in our expansion plans, we are looking into this direction where, based on the on the history, uh, we can trigger, you know, more more intelligent action. So from you know from this comparison, uh, process mining can act as the you know very powerful brain with uh, you know with lots of history and lots of memory, and uh, RPA can act as a muscle. Now I will, I will give uh, voice to Krzysiek, who will share with you uh, a bit more practical examples of what we implemented. Over to you, Krzysiek. Okay, thanks a lot, Jarek. So uh, first of all, from my side, maybe a very brief introduction. So first of all, happy to be here. And yes, so my name is Krzysiek with the company for around 10 years in various functions in, in business, in logistics, procurement, but also in IT. Uh, finance and governance, and then for the last two years, I'm mostly dealing with the with the process mining in the organization to help establish this and uh, to promote it as well in the in the organization. So uh, to give you a hint or to give you an overview of how we are applying process mining and what kind of use cases and insights we are having, I would like to start with this uh, short summary to also give you an indication, which was already also referenced before, that process mining can actually generate different types of insights. And depending on how we position it, we can also justify uh, the insights we are getting in different ways. And the question, which you may quite frequently hear when you're working with process mining, is okay, for example, how different it is from the Power BI or these kind of reports. So you just see the dashboard and then the people are asking you, okay, the dashboard is nice, but how is it different? So that's why I want to, I want to show you this because the process mining can be applied on all these types of analytics that we have. And of course, we also have the cases for the reporting. So simple metrics to generally give us the overall insights about uh, our process. So one of those examples is like this invoice inflow. So we have the process around the accounts payable, around the invoices. We are simply checking, okay, how many invoices we have received? Uh, what is the average number of invoices per, per AP accountant? Uh, how long it takes them to allocate those invoices? So very simple reporting, which is like not bringing much business value in terms of how we can improve the process and not complex but still can be handled through uh, querying our process. But we can go, let's say we can uh, scale up much more and it has much more potential. So for the process analytics, this is really where the process mining itself makes the difference. So typical ones uh, that we can start with when we are thinking about the process analysis is just so-called health check of the process, just to see how compliant it is, how efficient it is, uh, how much it deviates from the standard. So different, uh, different metrics to give us an indication uh, how well our process is running. An example here for the PO purchase order diagnostics where we can have a various set of metrics to tell us, okay, um, how much my process deviates from the standard, uh, where are the bottlenecks in terms of the processing time? If I have the purchase order and then I need to run release strategy over it, uh, is it running efficiently? Are there any bottlenecks? Maybe the uh, approval time takes uh, more time uh, than we have estimated. And then there is like a process gap which we can address. Similar case for the process analysis is just to see overall uh, the split of the activities in the process that are value added and non-value added. 
So typically, uh, the first uh, the first point where we can start are the manual steps and the changes in the process. So in majority of the cases, we consider the changes as non-value added activities and we would aim to reduce them as much as possible. So if we have a process in order to cash and in this process we are, for example, changing the price of the materials, then this is undesired non-value added activity and we would look for, no, for an opportunity to reduce uh, as much as possible uh, the number of, the, of those manual changes. But again, we can go even um, further than that and the next one, which was already addressed, which was has been already addressed in the previous presentations, is the monitoring. So we have the process, and we are constantly running a check on the process to see um, how well it is running and to act as an early warning system to give us an indication that we are, for example, uh, moving into the wrong direction. So here, uh, one of the examples that we have is for this uh, customer payment behaviors. We are, we are just checking the relationships between the steps, where the uh, when the invoices were issued, uh, what is the due, what are the due dates of those invoices, and what is the what are the actual payment uh, payment days. Uh, comparing it with the payment terms, we can actually see uh, is our accounts receivable healthy? Uh, do we get uh, uh, our payments on time, etc. So constantly monitoring in the background instead of just manually running weekly or monthly reports to see where we stand and we can react uh, to some trends that are that are uh, moving in the wrong direction and also which was highlighted which is also like a not a, a deployed case for us yes uh, yet but this is what we are trying to achieve as well with this let's call it predictive analytics although it's like a yeah big word but uh, simply speaking we want to use this past data and how the process is performing to um, to drive intelligent actions for the future and an example of this is we are trying to apply some use case in the credit management where observing the past history of how the process is uh, executed around certain uh, customers, we can then, uh, for example, optimize our credit management approach to see if our credit limits are correct, because maybe in the past, uh, the payment behavior of certain customers uh, uh, was, not, uh, was not as expected. We can, we can then do some extrapolation of this and to think whether the current credit, uh, credit limits are, are uh, correctly applied or maybe maybe we we need some change uh, in order to to reduce the risk so on the next slide uh what you will see um so this is just a simple visualization so i will not focus on that uh, this is just for our purchase to pay process like to really give you an insight how it looks in our in our case and in in our system so we have the process we have all the steps all the deviations in the process and for each case which was already mentioned by michael so we have the uh, we have this event log, we have the timestamps, we see the activities here in around purchase order item where we see really step by step with all the timestamps, uh, what was the sequence of the steps and when they were executed. And again, it was also highlighted different use cases that we can uh, drive out of it, like the where we consider sequence of steps uh, not, uh, not compliant, where the process steps sometimes are desired, where we have some time between the steps. Uh, which are creating some some delays and bottlenecks. So yeah, well, without focusing too much on that, on the next slide, just a few examples of our cases that we have uh, implemented in the uh, in our organization. So uh, where we can start is, as I have mentioned, this health check. So here we have applied various analytics in order to reduce uh, the number or the uh, those metrics that are that are impacting ne negatively our purchase to pay process. We focused on like late uh, good receipts and late purchase orders like Maverick buying, uh, which also we can translate or, or we can recalculate into real financial impact. So if we are talking about late purchase orders, so this is where our in we are getting the invoices and we are issuing our purchase orders retrospectively. So they were not created on time. 
uh, which creates an exposure, which uh, creates an impact on the um, on the accruals that we are we are uh, estimating uh, for the month end. Um, so this is this is a risk. The same with the late GR, where we are trying to monitor what is the impact of the late goods received, uh, also on invoice processing or invoice reworking, because people are receiving the invoices, there is no good receipt to post this invoice, and then there is a, a, an escalation required. It takes more time. Uh, and it generates non-value added activities. Uh, the second uh, use case, and of course, uh, maybe j just one more remark, we can always, of course, compare markets to each other, we can benchmark, we can look, look for best in class, and then we can try to figure out, okay, one market, why one market is better than another, and look for, for those efficiencies. Second one, uh, payment behavior. So again, by querying the process very simply, and that's why we are trying to adopt as many users as possible, because it's simple. Instead of doing the complex analysis, you can just query the process very simply. Okay, show me the situations where my uh, invoice due date happens before clearing date. And that's the only thing you need to ask the, uh, the process, and then it will give you those late payments, meaning that uh, our due date happened before the clearing. Again, obviously, uh, by analyzing this payment behavior, we can focus on those customers where maybe the payment ratio or average difference between the steps is long enough and we need some in a, uh, we need to take some action. And the last one is related with where we want to go into this area of predictive analytics. Uh, so we want to, um, as mentioned by Jarek, combine uh, the brain with the muscles, where by analyzing the past history and the performance of the customers, we could, for example, decide to automatically release certain orders or to remove the credit blocks uh, because the customer behavior is uh, uh, quite good uh, and we consider this customer as low risk customer. So without manual checks from treasury team or from, uh, from credit team, we can just release the orders and sell uh, and do the sales to the customers. Yeah, so that's it from my side. So thank you very much, and uh, yeah, over to you, Jarek. Thank you, Jacek. Uh, <clears throat> now to 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 sum up. Um, Thirty seconds, some... yeah. Thirty seconds. Okay. Uh, so so we <laughs> there were um, a certain you know assumptions that we had around process mining, uh, and we we learned that you know and we learned and I have my battle scars. We learned that uh, we need to focus on the change management on users, and it takes time to. Uh, to reflect properly the process in the in the system, uh, uh, and it is it works it works for us once we treat it as a discipline. When we look at the entire holistic combination of technology and, and change management and buy in from from the top, uh, and each part is equally important. The focus on training and user assumption was a key success factor for us. And then we also from the beginning we wanted to build it together. We 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 didn't want to have the approach that let's build something and they. So the business would come, but actually since the beginning we wanted to involve all the all the users in the process. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Um, look, um, we're, we're slightly running over, um, though, though you were very very good. Um, there is one question, and um, the questions have now disappeared from my screen. I'm not quite sure why. Um, it's and the question is, what if there is no log for the process, so that if it's a manual step, would anybody like to pick that up? Yeah, so um, I can just very briefly answer from my side, from my experience. So no, normally it requires this event log. So it requires this information about uh, about the timestamp uh, and uh, it needs to leave some trace in the system. But uh, as mentioned, for example, for us, we want to start uh, uh, experimenting with this task mining, which is like a, um, a com and which can give insights by, by capturing the information directly from the screen. And then a combination of those can also give you an end-to-end -end process. So in such case, you don't have really like the system trace, but you can track the uh, the activities that uh, uh, the user is doing. Great. Exactly. So we, maybe to add, uh, we we are after analyzing what is happening on the screen of an analyst solving problems through task mining. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Let's 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 move on because we are now five minutes over. We've got. Um, 20 minutes left. Um, so, um, Edwards, you have 20 minutes. You're supposed to have 20 minutes for your um, for your demo. 
Um, perhaps you can do it in 15 or 17 and leave us a couple of minutes at the end. Challenge accepted, Andrew. Challenge okay. accepted. Yeah, thank yeah. you guys for uh, for a great presentation. Uh, glad to be here, and uh, I will uh, I will show some example how it will look also practically in a process mining tool. Uh, just a second. Let me show my screen. Yep, here we go. Uh, yes, in uh, in this demo, we will be uh, uh, tracking a life cycle of uh, invoices uh, across organizations' uh, accounts uh, payable uh, workflow. And uh, regarding the data, in this case, uh, we are using uh, multiple data sources, and typically, this is also what will uh, what will happen in a real real case scenario. So, it could be, uh, by example, uh, invoice uh, portal, OCR mechanisms. Uh, it can be different kind of workflow tools, uh, document archiving, ERP systems. On the data side, uh, as uh, Michal already mentioned, so we will uh, be working from the uh, event log. And uh, in our case, event log will look uh, like this. And yes, uh, the good news is that uh, you can start working with, uh, with those three, uh, three main data points. And with additional attributes, you will get answers to, uh, to uh, more uh, deeper and complex questions. And that's also an important point as the guys mentioned also before, that it's always good to have this understanding also what what key elements you will be focusing on. And before the project starts, uh, it's good to have alignment on that as well. And it means that you can start to create this data model and it will help you in the further analysis. And uh, when we are loading the data, data in a system, you immediately get a heap of insights. Uh, and what is important here as well, the most of the of the analysis and uh, most of the insights uh, are generated automatically for you. Also here on the right side, you see all the uh, all the analytics tools that you can use. And on the my main window, uh, you will see uh, all the key uh, key metrics regarding the process. And it already gives you some. Uh, some understanding and most importantly also the full visibility what is actually happening so here as well by example you can see in uh, in this uh, accounts payable process in uh, the average duration uh, already from here you can uh, start to investigate some uh, some behaviors and start to filter out the process to get a deeper understanding so by example here you could look also at the instances where uh, the process is uh, taking, by example, for us longer than uh, longer than three days. Uh, we can look at uh, other elements, uh, things like how many events do we have on average in the process. And uh, here uh, in the event statistics, we will we can also see that all the events that are present in this process as well. And uh, by example, how frequently they are occurring in our our process and uh, look at the things like how many cases do we have how many events and how many uh, timelines how many invoices we are processing uh, the most uh, uh, the most of this uh, high level representation that uh, probably some of the guys you are familiar with is uh, is the uh, schema view uh, where we can look at the uh, at this uh, happy path or uh, most uh, dominant path, if you will. So in, in this case, it shows you the, the most common path, how this process uh, will be executed. Uh, the important, I think, element here is uh, uh, to understand that this is not a, a static model. So it's nothing that's something we designed. It's really based on the real-time data that you have in the system. So it is actually uh, as is process and uh, it's also dynamic so it means that you can also uh, look at this uh, process flow from different perspectives so we can uh, look also at uh, elements like uh, how many cases so the thickness uh, of, uh, of those lines indicate how many transitions we have from one event to another we can look also uh, from the perspective of uh, performance 
So in this case, it will show us how much uh, time uh, we are uh, we are uh, spending uh, between uh, those and between those events. And as well, we can uh, look at, at uh, throughput in our process. And uh, this could be also quite uh, interesting view to see where we are uh, having our bottlenecks appearing. So each uh, each of this circle indicates uh, individual case and the uh, coloring uh, indicates you also the aging of the case as they through, uh, flow through this process. And also here, by example, we already start to see that on this uh, first level approval, this is a bottleneck uh, that uh, starts to appear already from this high level view. It gives you uh, uh, immediate understanding what's really uh, is happening on, on in the process. Uh, and moving from that, uh, this is all good. Nevertheless, it's a, it's a pretty high level view and it doesn't show you this complexity. And especially when we are going outside of uh, traditional financial processes, uh, it's not always you will have this one distinct uh, happy path. There could be many cases that you have multiple ways how to uh, correctly uh, perform some specific process. And to uh, dive deep in this complexity itself, we can also then go into the path view, uh, which will show you uh, uh, all those variations that you have in the process. So by example, here we are looking at uh, uh, 16 uh, variants, uh, how our process is executed in, the, in this uh, accounts payable uh, process flow. Uh, 16 variants, that's actually in a real case scenarios, it's a fantastic result. In reality, uh, it's quite frequent uh, when we have uh, 2000 plus variants. And uh, this already gives us this uh, uh, short list uh, where we could start to uh, implement some process improvements so here as well. From the first variant, we see that this, uh, from this linear representation, we see that uh, the process flow is pretty smooth. And when we are going to the second variation, we already see that we have some inefficiencies in the process. So we have some reworks, we are uh, uh, performing the activities multiple times. Uh, and uh, what we have here, we have also here the process cost element, uh, which uh, we can also define uh, quite flexibly. And this is, uh, this is also an uh, important element here, as uh, this will help you uh, to start to uh, create this, uh, this business case as well, and to understand uh, where you will get the most return. Uh, uh, when you focus on some specific aspects on the process. And here as well, we can see that uh, this is the second most common process. Also, it's, uh, it's uh, quite uh, costly for us. Uh, then we can start to filter it out and uh, perform some root uh, cause analysis to understand where are those patterns and uh, what elements are uh, influencing this kind of uh, process behavior. Now we filter this process out. We see this is 16% uh, uh, of, the, of the total events. And with the breakdown tool, we can start to uh, dig deeper to understand uh, what could be the influence factors there. So by example, we can look at the things as well. Uh, we can compare, uh, look at different departments. Uh, is, uh, is there any differences there? Here we can see that the distribution is quite even. We can uh, look also at the locations, by example. And uh, also, what the, uh, the, uh, we can look also at the vendor. Maybe this is uh, determined by the vendor. And yes, and here we can see that uh, a really large chunk of the cases are uh, connected to the specific vendor. And this gives uh, already uh, uh, opportunity for us to really answer the questions. Uh, who, where, what happened and uh, get to the root cause of uh, of uh, inefficiencies in the process. And when we are going to the uh, most detailed view that we have also in the tool, which is the timeline view. And here we can recreate uh, uh, the whole process uh, per case level. So by example, uh, in the timeline uh, view, you can recreate all the process story across all the systems and uh, understand exactly in uh, every detail uh, what uh, happened there. 
So in this case, we are taking also the, the cost aspects, performance, so how much time we are spending, and also all the, all the attributes uh, on which we can also uh, build our analysis. And as the guys mentioned, that's, 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 uh, that's this first step that, uh, that typically happens in the projects. Of course, then you have also the question, okay, uh, what we can do about, uh, about our, uh, our discovery? Can we go beyond this process discovery? So in this case, what we can do, we can start to look at the business rules and start to track the, the process itself and uh, and analyze, by example, different uh, kind of uh, violations in the process that may occur. So, by example, here, if I look at the query analysis, so in this case, what can I do here from this compliance perspective? With a point-and-click interface, I can build up uh, this business rule where I'm looking at the uh, occurrences where uh, we have uh, rerouting more than two times. Uh, uh, all the approval levels that we have defined in the process we have skipped and the invoice was uh, still uh, paid in an ERP system. And uh, when we create this model, we can search for, uh, for all those uh, instances where it, uh, where it actually happened. Yeah, and here it gives uh, us also this case-by-case -case overview of all those uh, elements where it happened. And actually here I can see that uh, uh, we have some additional issues there as well. Uh, we have uh, multiple times uh, repeating the recognition here as well. So this is the very, very quick way uh, how we can uh, understand and then monitor, monitor the process. So another element, of course, uh, it's uh, monitoring for uh, different kind of uh, undesired uh, activities uh, in, in our process. So for that, we can use also our protocol analysis. And, and this, is a, this is a powerful tool when we are speaking about uh, scenarios when we, can, we want to track our uh, SLAs. So in this case, we can uh, build also uh, our protocol where we are doing the uh, pre-processing, the recognition of the invoices, verification. So if there is a high amount on the invoice, so we need to confirm that as well and exporting the invoice. So this one, this uh, uh, our SLA is to complete this process in less than one day. And when we are looking at all the violations, the system will also uh, give you all the elements where we are not really uh, uh, meeting our SLAs, and those could be also other violations as well as well. So here, uh, by example, we see okay, uh, um, more than 11% of the of the cases uh, we have also situations where we are not meeting our SLAs. Also, we have uh, multiple times happening when uh, when uh, recognition is done more than once, as we we define that as well before in our protocol, so we can apply this kind of condition and uh, see all those elements where it actually happens. And uh, what is important, uh, it, uh, it happens uh, practically instantly. So you can set up also uh, near uh, real-time process monitoring. And this is also this important aspect that in those cases, we are moving from this process discovery into more this uh, operational awareness. And we can be also uh, more uh, more proactive how we are uh, how we are managing our processes and how we are managing our businesses and to be more proactive uh, the important element is uh, uh, what uh, usually also our clients are looking for is as well uh, how we can uh, notify when we have some kind of uh, beh behavior which is not uh, desired in our process. So we can set up also the uh, uh, alerts. So the, the simple simple examples could be, okay, if the violation uh, occurs in the process or we already see the process in transition and, and we understand that uh, we will not uh, uh, hit our uh, uh, SLAs. So it means that we can notify also uh, uh, the people uh, who then can take uh, an action. Uh, we can go also even further. 
So we can integrate via the webhooks with other applications. So this could be also, by example, uh, RPA robots. So we can spawn an RPA robot. So based on those conditions, we can uh, trigger also automation there. Or also uh, there, there we could talk about the integration with, uh, with uh, different workflow tools. So based on, on, on those conditions, we can also trigger uh, different workflows. So it means that, again, that we are already starting to introduce some, uh, some uh, automation elements even before we are starting uh, our, uh, our RPA projects. Uh, another one important element as well, okay, the process discovery by itself. Yeah, we understand how the process looks like. So we did our project. Also, we want to track what is the what is the actual impact. So, by example, we are doing some automation project. We want to understand uh, how uh, what uh, results we actually achieved. So we can do here as well. So what we can do, we can uh, start to do the comparisons or benchmarking as well. So, by example, uh, here I have a filter which is the post implementation. So it means that we did already some uh, some automation projects. And also, I'm working with the current data set. So what it allows us to do, uh, based on the different metrics that we can create, we can also the monitor how actually uh, how actually successful we were with the project. Because uh, there could be situations uh, we are automating some specific uh, uh, specific task, uh, some specific activity. Yes, uh, the report shows us the robot is uh, incredibly quick. Nevertheless, it can create also some additional button like somewhere downstream, and this could happen quite uh, quite frequently. So this kind of view will give us indication how we are uh, how we are actually uh, doing. So here as well, if you look at the average duration, we went from three days to five hours. Uh, post implementation, uh, uh, actually, the time is three days, six hours, and those are the real cases that uh, that can happen when we are looking from the cost perspective. However, uh, yeah, we see that uh, we definitely, uh, definitely uh, have some some gains here as well. And uh, as a benchmark tool, we can start also to uh, compare how we did, by example, in uh, in different locations. And uh, build a quick graph. Time yep. to the time is up, my friend. No problem. I think <laughs> uh, I think we're good. Okay, excellent, excellent. I, I've got one kind of question for you, very very quickly. I mean, who typically would would manage this tool within the organisation? Uh, typically, uh, from from the experience, uh, this is in uh, in the space of the Centre of Excellence. It could be also the uh, also the analytics teams, uh, especially in the, in the larger organizations, uh, who are providing this uh, as a, as a service uh, to the internal uh, business clients. Okay, look, we've got one minute left, which is really not enough to ask this last question, um, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, and this is to anyone that wants to jump in. Um, so we've we've heard an awful lot about the opportunities. Um, so thank you very much, I'm going to say, at this point, which is like a, the, the formal point. We could probably close on that point. Thank you very, very much. We've heard about all the opportunities, but I'd also like to ask um, maybe what are the barriers? I mean, why hasn't everybody already got this? Is it because it's just so new? Um, you know, what are the barriers to uh, or, or, or some of the challenges? around um, around um, implementing process process mining. Yeah, Rick, I'm gonna to come to you. So what, what, what challenges? So I can only explain based on our uh, experience. Uh, so it's um, underestimated time needed to uh, integrate it properly with the process, number one. Uh, uh, the second one is uh, proper I mean, uh, change management, uh, I, I would say it's, it is a technology not yet uh, fully understood. Um, and uh, it's a looking for, but it's, it's linked to change management and communication linked to, uh, to, to, to good uh, use, use cases, to finding a good use cases. But again, this, 
I would say um, we the barriers that we had, we, we overcame, for example, with focus on user adoptions, on trainings, and getting, uh, you know, and ensuring proper change management, and as well, devoting enough time for the for the building proper uh, data models. But that's so our... I can just, yeah. yeah, we have just one sentence from my side. So the way from discovery to realization is not so short as, as it may seem at first glance, right? And this is mm. a challenge to turn those insights into into some uh, some benefits because it requires a lot of additional uh, components, as Yarek mentioned, like change management, the uh, the business adoption. Uh, sometimes it requires pro some mini projects to be launched in order to optimize the process. So, thank you. And, and look, from the point of view then of of, of Abby, because um, um, you want people to take this tool, so. So what, what are the challenges you face then when you're talking to potential customers? Susan, maybe. I think the um, the main hurdle is the data model and data acquisition. I think that takes the longest time to put it that way. So it's, that's where um, a lot of um, focus should be had. But there, again, there are different means and methods to actually get the data ready available. But that certainly is the, the area where the time before you actually start going into. And I think use cases to define, as with, every, as with everything, get used to it, have a proof of value and discover the technology, but have enough um, challenges um, that you want to really address with that. So, same with any technology, so to make sure that you get the value out of it, of course, as you investigate it. But I think um, the right use case should already bring you the business case reward, and therefore thereafter you have an expansion modus that you can go into. Thank you. And, and uh, anybody else like to add to that? Yeah, I think also it depends on the culture of organization as well. If the organization is re really ready to uh, uh, embrace the data-driven approach, because sometimes also, especially for the for the managers, it can be a little bit scary, because really what process intelligence does, it gives you this uh, full visibility over the process. So therefore, as all of course, yes, the ch the, the change management, as Jaroslav mentioned, comes in as well. It's pretty pretty important that we are bringing also uh, uh, all the other departments, by example, along in this journey. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's one thing, because, Yarek, when you were saying that, you know, that process mining is the brain and an RPA, the muscle, I was thinking, well, where, where's the employee in this, right? And um, presumably there, there may be some challenges around around that, about that visibility, in fact, about what people can see. Have you have you confronted any of those challenges in, in, in implementing this? You're, You're on mute. mute. Yeah. Sorry, actually in our experience, when we uh, deployed a larger use case involving uh, users, it actually uh, empowered them. So we, uh, it, it augmented the role, in fact, because they get visibility that they have never had before. Just imagine if you are an analyst and you, you know, and I would assume you, you, you like your process, you love your process, and then you have visibility what happened yesterday, what happened a uh, week ago and uh, two weeks ago, and how it behaves, what is, you know, creating your, your, your frictions, it's just, uh, you know, great tool to improve your, your day. So I would look at it, it, it gives certain power uh, to, 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 to users and augments the role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also to, um, let's say, extend their perspective, right? Because normally when we are, for example, working in one function, we are focused around one uh, our part of the process and we are not thinking what is happening before. So it also improves the communication, for example, between GBS and market, because maybe the problem and the bottleneck which occurs in GBS is actually not really the root cause, but the root cause is somewhere in the market so in the purchasing process. So and that, that also allows to break those, let's say, silos and exchange information between all the stakeholders in the process. Yeah, very, very interesting. And anybody else wants to comment on this? Okay, as I say, we've run over and we're, we're, we're not losing people, so, um, so it's clearly interesting. Um, I'm going to do this though, so really a wrap up, okay? So um, I know that each of you gave a kind of takeaway at the end of your, your presentations. 
but over the course of the whole the whole webinar i mean i'm going to come to each of you and say okay so what's what's the um the one the one key takeaway um that you'd like people to go away with from from today so um where shall i start um in terms of my screen suzanne you're first so i'll, I'll come to you first so um i think um for me, the main takeaway is that don't forget the many different aspects that the tools can be utilized. So there's there's many um, much, much functionality, much value it can bring, and look at it as a on a whole with all the aspects and try try them out. Thank you, Michal. You're next on my screen. After uh, that, we're coming. Uh, to uh, yeah, from my perspective, I think that uh, everyone should uh, try to see this technology as an opportunity to not wait waiting for the perfect data and after implementing this technology from the very beginning you will be able to to get low hunting fruits on the on the tree so that's really important not to wait uh, for the perfect data start doing learn by doing i will repeat once again my sentence okay Krishan. okay so for me something similar so it has big potential so also what our IT is sometimes saying, scale it or burn it. So for this one, it's definitely worth giving it a try. There's a lot of yeah, uh, document, document, external documents. There are some open source also uh, ways to start with this. So just give it a try and yeah, uh, it, it may bring you uh, good results. Thank you, Yarek. Yeah, so I'm gonna repeat, there is a, there is a lot of promise uh, around process mining. Uh, it works if you treat it as a discipline, uh, look at it holistically, but there are certain barriers, and as Krzysztof uh, well pointed out, the road from initiation to realization is longer and probably longer than, than, than you would expect. Thank you. Thank you. And Edwards? And still, it's a powerful tool. Nevertheless, of course, you need to think about the methodology and to have this clear also understanding what you want to achieve. So I think that's important as well. Okay, all right. Thank you, guys. And and sorry, just another string to my. In five years' time, do you expect that everyone will have process mining tools in their GBS? Just just stick your hands up if you think yes. Only one, two, three, four. Krishek. Oh, I, I can five. say maybe not not process mining as a pure process mining, but really as a foundation for what we have also seen today, like uh, for those additional features, like predictive analytics, because it really should uh, scan your process, but then to generate the insights, this is where it can it can still evolve. And I suppose the, 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 the kind of obverse side of the coin there is if you don't have it, you're gonna kind of be left behind. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and Yarek, sorry, I'm just going to come to you at the end because I know you've got some ideas about um, how we can continue this in Aspire. Yeah. I mean, do you want to just very briefly um, say what your plans uh, are? Sure. Sure. So uh, reach out to you, and I think it makes sense that we organize a, a kind of working group uh, under umbrella of Aspire uh, to exchange uh, to exchange experience, exchange learnings for process mining. I know it's uh, it's getting adopted more and more in our you know, uh, in, in Krakow uh, with, with our uh, with other companies, I think it makes sense that we maybe we we get together to share uh, what what is working, what is not working, and simply collectively we, we are we are stronger. So if we can organize it under the umbrella of, of Aspire Andrew, that would be great. I'm happy to be there every time to share our journey, give you more details, and also learn from you because we are we are very open, you know, and uh, okay. we hope for inspirations. Excellent. Well, I hope Abby and, and uh, Auto ID will join us as well. Um, and in fact, the people that are still on the line, um, which is 74 people are still on the line. I think we could keep going all the day. I'm not sure we'd, we'd, we'd lose people. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Um, very, very um, insightful um, session. Um, yeah. And uh, take care, stay safe, and, and let's keep talking. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Yep, Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.